Hello. Today we're going to cover groundwater and the application of Darcy's Law for confined and unconfined aquifers. The flow within the aquifer is considered steady state and 1D. That means the flow is constant. The learning objectives for this module are applying Darcy's Law to calculate steady state groundwater in a confined aquifer and calculating steady state groundwater in an unconfined aquifer. Through the lesson, you will get better clarity on what it is what it means to have a confined or unconfined aquifer. First, a confined aquifer, we're going to look at it under one-dimensional flow and steady state. In addition, groundwater is considered laminar flow. This is due to very little turbulence found under the Earth's crust. The following schematic will provide you with an illustration of a confined aquifer. The flow within the confined aquifer is confined by impermeable layers. These impermeable layers prevent water from leaving the zone. The hydraulics between one point to the next follows a linear projection such that H1 to H2 will decrease linearly. This is due to friction within the system. The distance of the aquifer of the layer will impact how the flow is calculated. Thus, H, which describes the water surface of the groundwater table, is equal to Q, which is a discharge per unit area or the flux of the water divided by the hydraulic conductivity plus a constant. Next, based on that, you can directly apply Darcy's Law. So let's try it out. In this example, I'm asking you to calculate the flow in a confined aquifer with the permeability constant or hydraulic conductivity of 1.5 gallons per day per feet squared and a cross-sectional area of 50 feet squared. The total length of the aquifer is 100 feet, H1 is 10 and H2 is 7. So our governing equation for this is the Darcy's Law and from the schematic that we previously made, we know what the values are. We can solve by plugging in the hydraulic conductivity, the delta H over L, and the cross-sectional area. For this example, you will get a flow rate of 2.3 gallons per day. In our next example, we're going to talk about an unconfined aquifer. An unconfined aquifer under steady state. In an unconfined aquifer, we are noticing that the thickness varies because of the groundwater table. Even though the computed water table follows a linear projection, the actual water table has a curvature to it. We assume a velocity distribution that is uniform, but the actual water distribution varies, as shown in the schematic. The flow rate for an unconfined aquifer is calculated as the hydraulic conductivity constant times the square differences of the depths at point one and two, divided by two over the change in the distance from point one and two. Now, if we wanted to get a unit discharge, we do not need to include the width term. But in this example, I've included the width, or in this equation, so that you can always calculate the flow rate and not the flow rate per unit width. But please note, 
in high, in groundwater, many times we calculate flow rate per unit width. So an example, imagine you have a stratum of clean sand and gravel between two channels that have a hydraulic conductivity of negative of 10 to the negative first centimeters per second. And it supplies water from a ditch 20 feet from the bottom of a stratum. If water from the second channel is two feet above the stratum and the distance of the two ditches are 30 feet apart, which is the thickness of the stratum, what is the flow rate? So our governing equation is that for an unconfined aquifer, because we only have one location where you have impermeable layer. Next, in order to solve this problem, some of the data is provided to us in metric units, while other is provided in English units. So we will convert the 10 to the negative 1 centimeters per second into feet per minute. And then we know that one that 7.48 gallons is equal to one cubic feet. So we're just multiplying that equation by one so that we can get the data to be in gallons per minute per feet squared, which is 1.54. Then we plug it in to the equation of the Darcy's law that we had solved, and we determined this to be 10.2 gallons per minute per feet squared. Now, if I told you there was a width to the actual aquifer, then we could solve the actual flow rate.